I've always been a fan of Chorus, but with this, I feel like I just got season tickets. For that little demo jam, I started out with the 80s setting. Then I used the harmonic mode, making use of the ramp tempo function whilst accidentally pushing the pedal ever so slightly out of frame. Then I came back in with the rack setting and a little bit of dirt from the summer school science fair. And because people always ask about the bass, yeah, the bass got some love from the 70s setting. We've got a lot to cover, but I do want to start with a very quick chorus explainer just so we can use words like oscillator and vibrato with everybody being on the same page. So skip ahead if you're a chorus genius or just wait it out. Take a signal and then run that through a delay of a couple of milliseconds and then modulate the actual delay time back and forth a little bit using a low frequency oscillator or LFO. That will vary the pitch because it's actually being played back faster or slower depending on whether we're stretching or compressing time. That minor pitch variance is known as vibrato. Mix vibrato back in with the original dry signal and we've got chorus. So here's a dry signal, a vibrato signal, and then both of them mixed together to make chorus. I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about the features of this pedal that you're likely to find on a typical chorus pedal. This is a long enough video as it is, but suffice to say you've got your rate, your depth, there's a mix knob that we just showed off, there's even a tone knob and a delay knob for whether we want a short, almost flanger-esque modulation or a longer delay for a looser, more spacious effect. <laughs> Thank you. 
So now you've probably heard the pedal a little bit and you're thinking, all right, I have a pretty good idea about what this thing sounds like, but you really don't because this pedal is a bit of a chorus chameleon. Hey, that actually might be a good name for this video. Make a note of that. This pedal uses analog bucket brigade delayed chips, but those chips are being controlled by a digital brain, which gives us direct control over the rate and depth and even shape of the oscillation. So we can choose from sine, triangle, square, solena, and triplet solena. This knob here doubles as a switch to let us go between them, and here they are with a basic chorus effect. <laughs> This pedal actually gives us two low frequency oscillators. With this knob all the way to the left, they're locked together, but as we increase it, we start to push that second LFO out of phase of the first, which gives us kind of a chorus on chorus type effect. <laughs> And if you're sitting there thinking, hey, wait a second, two oscillators out of phase of one another, isn't that kind of the recipe for the boss dimension effect? And you know what? I think with the triangle setting and with the phase all the way up, yeah, we get something pretty close. So we've got a lot of settings we can adjust, and thankfully we have some good jumping off points with these six presets up top and a user slot, although we can save our creations in any one of these slots as well. So let's go through the presets real quick so you can get a sense for them, starting with 70s. And this is a unique setting for this pedal in that it's the only mono setting. So there's an LFO on one side and dry signal on the other, and it's giving CE2. Eighties and rack mode are where the new wave name really starts to feel appropriate. Although I kind of assume new wave refers to the waveform aspect of the pedal. Either way, here they go. Vibrato is a nice classic vibrato and uh, it kind of feels like it's gunning for my VB2. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, when we get to rotary and harmonic mode, you may notice that these are purple, not green or white. And that's to indicate that the two LFOs aren't just out of phase, but LFO2 is operating faster than LFO1. So in rotary mode, LFO2 is set to half the intensity of LFO1, but it's operating three times faster. And then in harmonic mode, the intensities are the same, but LFO2 is twice as fast as LFO1. Couple more features I wanna show off real quick. One of my favorite features of the RT20 Rotary Ensemble is the ability to toggle between slow and fast speeds, so you get that rising and falling transition. This lets you toggle between fast and slow, so you can set both speeds or just let it drop down to half the current set speed. And this is a great feature to have and a pretty good alternative to using an expression pedal. <laughs> I also really like the bloom function. Instead of true bypass, it's just sitting there, but just keeping the bucket brigade delays stationary. It's only once it gets engaged that they start wobbling back and forth, so it can bring in those effects a little more naturally. Here's the normal true bypass on and off compared with the bloom function. A few quick words on functionality. There's two mini jacks on the back here, one for MIDI, so we can control a bunch of parameters from a controller, and another for an expression pedal, which lets us control the rate in real time. We can also tap the right switch three times for tap tempo, and we can hit both switches at the same time to toggle between presets. Finally, this is a stereo pedal. I've been recording all these clips and demos in stereo, and what we're getting is LFO1 on the left, LFO2 on the right. And for all you stereo heads out there, yes, it does indeed do stereo in, stereo out. There's some other stuff we need to talk about, though. So, it comes with a power supply. That's really nice. It's also kind of good because this pedal demands 300 milliamps of 18 volt power. And none of my power supplies are quite up to that task and you can't cheat it with 250 milliamps either. My tests showed that it was drawing around 260 milliamps pretty consistently. So make sure you've got enough power on tap if you want this on your board. Two, the mix and tone settings aren't saved in the presets, and you can't adjust them through MIDI either. I'm assuming this is because these are analog controls and digital potentiometers can be really tricky to implement. This means that you can't bounce from a chorus to a vibrato without reaching down and tweaking this knob. Third, I really wish there was a filter to split the frequencies between those oscillators. That would really help those rotary and harmonic settings. And I realize that's really pushing the boundaries of what a chorus pedal needs, and it's more analog tone shaping that's probably hard to do from the digital side, but a boy can dream, right? Number four, and this is a big one, it looks like early on some of these pedals shipped with a firmware that caused them to crash and lock up, and that's... That's exactly what happened to me. Pedal worked for about five minutes and then just nothing from any of the controls. Even after power cycling it 
multiple times, and I was giving it the right power from the included power adapter. I wasn't doing anything crazy, it just locked up. Jackson Audio was very responsive to my email. They sent me a link to an updated firmware, version 1.1, and that fixed the problem right away, and it's been running perfectly ever since. All told, a minor inconvenience, not the end of the world. But I know plenty of guitar players who love chorus, and a firmware update just isn't something they're going to be able to do. I actually had to go and borrow a Windows laptop because I have Macs here, and the update program is only available as an EXE. Someone looking at this pedal should have some level of assurance that they're getting an up-to-date version. If this was just an early problem and it's all behind us now, then let's make sure it really is behind us. I don't think that's too crazy of an ask, especially considering the pedal's price and the other super modulation pedals it's going up against in this area. All that being said, you really have to consider what you're getting here, which is a ton of flexibility and some really thoughtful features coupled with an authentic Bucket Brigade signal path. Vintage style Bucket Brigade based pedals have this wonderful sound, but they tend to major in one sound. And as much as I absolutely love the Boss CE20 Chorus Ensemble and the Keeley Mod Workstation, these are digital and they have their weak spots. BBD plus a digital brain is going to let us emulate any number of analog chorus pedals or even come up with some new ones that don't exist yet. And I think that's what people are really going to like about this thing. Jackson Audio has a bunch of pedals that I really want to try out, and what I really like about the assortment here is that they're not just the same physical box with different code and graphics on them. I mean, the Optimist is a MIDI controllable overdrive pedal. That Silvertone Twin 12 looks absolutely rad, and I really want to try out the Prism. And look at this, they've even got this modular fuzz pedal where you can swap out different physical modules to get different styles. They're trying lots of exciting stuff. They're definitely not just cranking out clones and tube screamers over there. So head over to zounds.com, and if you can, please use my affiliate link down in the description. That's how I get a few bucks out of it. And check out the new wave and all the other Jackson Audio pedals. If you're into chorus the way that I'm into chorus, hopefully you get a chance to plug into one of these things. It's a whole lot of pedal, and this has been a whole lot of video. So I'm going to get out of here. I'll catch you on the next one.